Have you ever been wrong about a movie before? Seen a movie, not liked it? Then sometime later when you revisited the movie, you realized it's actually pretty good? This happened to me with Halloween 3 and a lot of people. The infamous sequel without Michael Myers after Halloween 2, it presumably left both Michael Myers and Dr. Loomis dead engulfed in flame. And in October 1982, we were given Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, a Halloween film that had absolutely nothing to do with Michael Myers, Dr. Loomis, or thankfully, Laurie Strode. Yeah, not a big fan of the character anymore. She, just, I never want to see her in another entry again. However, back to the topic on hand. Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. I first seen this film, I believe, 1999 Halloween season. I've heard how bad it was. I rented it from a video store and I was bored. From start to finish, I thought the film was a slog to get through. I didn't like the main character. I didn't think he was interesting. I thought the villain was just downright boring. And overall, I didn't find any of the characters or the setting likable. A big, boring factory that makes masks. It just didn't <clears throat> work for me, and I never watched the film again. Fast forward to the 2000s, we all know the big fancy Halloween box set Shout Factory came out with that I sadly never got. But we eventually got news of a new Halloween movie starring Jamie Lee Curtis back as Laurie Strode and it got a lot of people talking and it had me wanting to revisit those old movies. One day, summer of 2018, at a Walmart, I saw the bare bones basic version of the Shout Factory Halloween box set. This was all the movies in two clamshell cases, and it was for a good price, so I got it. And I began to rewatch through the movies, even Halloween 3. Still didn't like it as much as I do now, but it was better than I remembered, and I found the plot more interesting. It's a film I started to revisit every October, and every time I did, I found I liked it more and more. Halloween 3 actually has a very interesting plot. It has a ominous, tense atmosphere. The town the pr pr movie is primarily set in. Just everything feels wrong from the start of that town. Nothing feels right. Santa Mira is a very unsettling setting for a film. The people even feel off here. The film centers around a doctor who seems like a borderline deadbeat dad who's barely in his kids' lives. And there's a murder at the hospital and he goes with the daughter of the murdered man to investigate. And the film is a very eerie and foreboding mystery that gives you enough clues to keep you invested as you go along. 
even important details that you won't think will be important till you find out later on. Like, near the beginning of the movie, you see a news broadcast about a piece of Stonehenge missing. Or a scene where you get a tour of the factory and you find out the owner of the Silver Shamrock Company that makes these masks is the king of the practical joke. All the while, these things, we're getting important clues to the mystery and what's going on, and we don't realize their clues, while Dr. Chalice, still not the most likable person, is brilliantly played by Todd Atkins. Our villain, Connell Cochran, is great. You can just tell the pleasant public relations face he puts on that there is a evil underneath that. He has a very unsettling, pleasant demeanor. And his henchmen are revealed to be animatronic. Which, again, going back to clues we didn't know we were getting, there was one that burns the car he's in, and the doctor doing the autopsy, all she finds is machine parts, and she incorrectly assumes they're part of the car. Good stuff. I, again, I can't state enough, I was wrong about... Halloween 3 Season of the Witch, a film that rightfully should have just dropped the Halloween title and just been given the name Season of the Witch. It's a film I look forward to watching every spooky season now. The mystery, the suspense, the great eerie score that plays through the movie that just undercuts that there's something sinister just below the surface completely and totally enhances the atmosphere of this film. And when we get to the big reveal of what's going on here, that they're using pieces of the missing section of Stonehenge and putting fragments of them in this tag that's glued to the mask, in that there's this big silver shamrock giveaway coming on, and they're going to use these masks to commit a mass human sacrifice for what the villain calls just a prank on the children, is terrifying and disturbing, and also just there's a certain level of absurdity to the fact that it boils down to, it's just a joke. It just makes Connell Cochran that much more sinister and evil of a villain. And the way the film takes its time to build and bring you to that realization is absolutely brilliant. Like I said, the town, we just know something's off about it. It's under surveillance. It has curfews. A guy who is drunk and says he's going to Molotov the factory gets killed by the animatronics. <coughs> and the film's brilliant ending where Chalice is calling stations trying to get the giveaway video shut off and he can get all but one station and it ends with him screaming stop it stop it stop it and we don't know what happens is just brilliant in so many ways <clears throat> it's one of those endings that does stick with you and i know there has been a fan-made sequel to these this film and there's a push for an official sequel Truthfully, even though I now love this movie, I do not want an official sequel because knowing what happens after the credit starts would diminish this movie the same as if John Carpenter came out and said, 
yeah, Childs was really the thing at the end of the film, or neither one of them were the thing in his remake of The Thing. I admit explanations are important, and there are times we need explanations, but there are also times where the unanswered mystery is what we remember in the end, and this is one of those cases. It leaves on that note where you don't know what happened, and it makes Halloween 3 all the better for it. Halloween 3 is not only an example of why you should revisit some movies you didn't like when you were younger, but why some of those movies need to be revisited. Go back to some of these movies you may not have liked with your hindsight knowing what they're about and just look at them in a different light. Some you still may not like. I'll never like Halloween for example, but some like Halloween 3, you might revisit and just say, I was completely wrong about this movie. Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, <coughs> is a brilliant horror film and one of the hidden gems of 80s horror that just got swept under the rug because no Michael Myers, and it did not deserve it. It probably should have just been called Season of the Witch, but they wanted to continue the franchise and try something new with an anthology series, which at the very least is respectable. So, again, I would just advise you, if you haven't seen this one in a long time, maybe like me, until my first revisit, it has been decade since you watched it, give Season of the Witch a revisit. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. Montober is winding down, but there is still more ahead. Over and out. <laughs>